Welcome back to High Stakes. Elevate your game by subscribing to our channel so you never miss our daily content. For exclusive access to our premium betting picks, join our Patreon, find the link in the comments section below. Stay ahead with High Stakes. Boston Red Sox vs. Baltimore Orioles When looking at how these starting pitchers have been doing, there is a significant difference in the home-slash-road splits. Brian Bello is 6-2 with a 4.68 ERA and a 1.32 whip in 11 road games, 59.2 innings, while Albert Suarez is 2-1 with a 2.72 ERA and a .233 batting average against in 10 games, 7 starts inside of Camden Yards, 39.2 innings. The ability to be patient and force these teams, who used a lot of pitchers on Friday, is critical. In the last 30 days, the Orioles are second in MLB with 103 total walks while the Red Sox are tied for 10th with 87 total walks. All in all, go with the Baltimore Orioles to secure a win as the better bet for this game. Take Baltimore Orioles to win. These teams combined to score 22 runs on 31 hits on Friday and each team was forced to use a good amount of bullpen arms. Throughout the month of August, these pitching staffs have been struggling as the Red Sox are last in Major League Baseball with a 6.12 team ERA in 14 games in August while the Orioles are 22nd with a 5.28 team ERA in their 14 games this calendar month. Both teams have deep lineups that should be able to remain hot so go with over 9.5 runs in this game as the better option here. Take over 9.5 runs. San Francisco Giants vs. Oakland Athletics The Athletics have won five of their last six games, while the Giants have lost four of their last five games. They've been on a roll offensively and scored at least seven runs in three of their last four games. Expect them to play well offensively in this game because Birdsong has cooled off after a great start to his season and gave up 12 runs in his last two starts. He gave up 11 runs in his last three road starts, and with San Francisco's bullpen giving up 10 runs in their last four games, they will have a hard time slowing down the athletics in this game. The Giants struggled offensively in recent games, with the team scoring 11 runs in their last four games. Their offensive struggles will continue in this game because they haven't had a lot of success against right-handers and Bido has done a good job on the mound in recent starts, giving up three runs in his last two starts. He gave up four runs in his last two home starts, and with Oakland having the sixth best bullpen in the league, they will keep San Francisco's offense in check. Go with Oakland to cover the money line. Also take the over. Chicago White Sox vs. Houston Astros The Chicago White Sox have been playing better as of late, but the Houston Astros are obviously the better team and should be able to dominate. When diving into the previous seven games for both of these starting pitchers, Chris Flexen is 0-4 with a 6.00 ERA and a 1.79 whip in 33.0 innings while Hunter Brown is 4-2 with a 3.73 ERA and a 1.44 whip in 41.0 innings during that span. Since the All-Star break, these offenses are on two completely different levels as the Astros are 15th in Major League Baseball with a .731 team OPS and averaging four runs in their 25 games in the second half of the season, while the White Sox are dead last in MLB with a .621 team OPS while scoring only 2.96 runs per game during their 25 games since the All-Star break. All in all, go with the Houston Astros to cover the run line at home as the better bet for this game. Take Houston Astros minus 1.5 runs. When looking at the pitching splits for these starters this year, they are not doing too well as Chris Flexen is 1-6 with a 6.75 ERA and a .275 batting average in 48.0 innings, 11 games, 9 starts. On the road while Hunter Brown is 1-5 with a 4.37 ERA and a 1.49 whip in 70.0 innings, 14 starts, inside of Minute Maid Park this year. These teams were able to score 9 total runs on Friday and these teams needed to use a bunch of relievers as Chicago used 4 pitchers in 5 innings while Houston had 4 pitchers get the final 10 outs of the game before losing in the opening game of the series. Go with over 8.5 runs in this game as the better bet for this matchup here. Take over 8.5 runs. 
Los Angeles Dodgers vs. Cardinals, the Dodgers have been on a mission to continue their winning ways and Saturday provides a great opportunity for them. They will be starting Tyler Glasnow, who has been a in great form. The Dodgers have won six of their last eight games that he has started. Glasnow has an ERA of 3.60 since the All-Star break. He has already faced the Cardinals once this year, which came all the way back in March. He dominated St. Louis and is in good enough form to do it once again on Saturday. The Cardinals are struggling as they are hitting just .180 against the Dodgers this season. They have also hit the eighth fewest home runs in the league. They will be starting Andre Pallant and the Cardinals haven't played well with him on the bump. They have lost five straight games when he is featured. He also has an ERA of 5.30 during home games which the Dodgers' top offense will dominate. Take Los Angeles Dodgers minus 1.5 runs. The offense will be the star of the show just like it was on Friday night. The Cardinals do having a batting average of .249 at home which will bode well enough for them to score a couple of runs. The Dodgers will take down the Cardinals with their electric offense. Los Angeles has hit the third most home runs in the sport and they are facing a pitching that has an ERA of over five during home games. Take the over on Friday. Cleveland Guardians vs. Milwaukee Brewers, Tanner BB has been performing great for the Guardians in his last few starts as he has a record of 2-0 with an ERA of 2.16. In his last three starts BB has only allowed one walk, which is going to hurt a team that tends to benefit a lot off of walks. Freddy Peralta in his last three games have not been as consistent with a record of 1-1 and an ERA of 5.29. We are not going to see the Guardians hit their bullpen early today with BB at the mound and as a result should see some strong pitching from the couple that may have to come out for the final innings. The Brewers batting average is low enough in their recent games and couple that with them going against a strong pitcher, I have to side with the Guardians in this one. Take the Cleveland Guardians on the money line. The Cleveland Guardians have an over-under record of 1-2-2 in their last five games. Cleveland will score runs against Freddie Peralta, but I am doubting their ability to do much damage once he is taken off the plate with the Brewers ranking second overall in bullpen ERA at 3.23. I do not expect much out of the Brewers to score many runs themselves with Tanner Bibby starting and them having to go up against the top-ranked bullpen. All signs point to a one-sided game with the Guardians unable to take this game over the total themselves. I am siding with the under at 7.5 runs. San Diego Padres vs. Colorado Rockies, there is no denying that the Rockies are much more of a threat to win when playing at home. They are a modest 28-32 SU at home, while sitting 33-25 on the run line. However, this one simply comes down to the pitching matchup, which easily favors the Padres. I'll lay the 1.5 runs with San Diego, who's on an absolute heater right now. They're 19-4 in their last 23 games, winning by multiple runs in 12 of those games. Cease has been on a tear recently as well, logging an insane 0.80 ERA over his last six starts, 33.2 IP. The right-hander also has the Rockies number, limiting their current roster to a slash line of .200 slash .250 slash .433 over 60 at-bats. I'll dive into the Padres' offensive numbers below, but I'm confident that they'll be able to stretch this lead out by multiple runs. Take San Diego Padres minus 1.5 runs. While Cease is in great form right now, I think there's a chance the Rockies help contribute a few runs to the total, helping to send us over. At home, they're the second best team in the league in average, .270, and seventh best in OPS, .771. Make no mistake, the crux of this play on the over is the Padres' matchup against Kyle Freeland. The Southpaw has struggled mightily this season, bringing in a 5.75 ERA and 1.49 whip. San Diego also has his number, as the current roster is slashing .321 slash .379 slash .506 against him over 162 at-bats. The Padres are one of the hottest offenses in the game right now, sitting third in team batting average .277 and fourth in OPS .813 over the last 15 days. Finally, if they don't tee off on Freeland, 
they'll have opportunities late against Colorado's 30th ranked bullpen, 5.69 ERA. Let's take the over. Atlanta Braves vs. Los Angeles Angels When they met in Atlanta last season, the Braves won two of three games. The Braves have fared well away from home this season, sporting a 32-31 road record heading into Friday. The Angles haven't had the same luck even on their home turf, going 26-38 at Angel Stadium. Canning has a 4.56 ERA in 13 starts at home this year. He's also allowed 10 home runs and 32 walks in those games. Atlanta is holding on to the final wild card slot in the National League, and these are the games they know they need to win, especially with Sale's reliability this season. The Braves are 15-7 when Sale has pitched this season, and all but one of those wins have come by at least two runs. The Southpaw is 5-3 with a 2.44 ERA in 12 road starts this season, striking out 100 batters and allowing only four home runs over 73 and two-thirds innings. Before the start of this series, Atlanta was 6-4 in the last 10 meetings with the Angels, all of those wins coming by at least three runs or more. Take the Braves with the run line. Over their last 10 meetings, the over has gone 7-3 with the winning side usually carrying the bulk of the load with at least 6 or more runs. In their last meeting last season, they managed to combine 17 runs, the winnings Braves scoring 12 of those. These two offenses do sit in the bottom half of the game in terms of runs per game, the Braves averaging 4.31 a night and the Angels 4.02. Atlanta does, however, average more on the road, with 4.48 per game. In their current road trip, they've scored at least five runs in four of their first seven games, and they've scored five runs or more in six of their last nine. The Angels' offense needs to look for some redemption after a dismal series against Toronto. Scoring just five runs at home is not acceptable. They have some solid young bats, so those types of guys are prone to hot and cold runs. I expect at least a couple of them to step in and produce enough to chip in and get us where we need to be in this game. Take the over.